Hi everyone, welcome back to the Red Blossom Tea channel. Today we'll look at some aged teas. Besides poor, um, oolongs can also be aged as well. So aged teas are actually teas that have been stored properly. Uh, they're stored in larger volumes in a controlled environment rather than just stale tea. So when a tea is fresh like this, uh, this is a lightly oxidized current year oolong. Compared to uh, an aged tea, this is a 1986 tea. Uh, the difference is this is lightly oxidized, but it's, we drink it for how fresh and herbaceous, how crisp the flavor is. Um, the nose is a lot more floral. You get a lot of the fruit notes versus aged teas when it's aged properly in a control environment, you get more of the, um, the, the, marzipan finish, you get the dry plum pluot flavors. Uh, the flavor has developed from the fresh leaves to more of the thicker, richer finish. You also lose quite a lot of the tannins when aging. Now, if you have some teas that you bought a few years ago and you either kept it in cupboard or uh, some people uh, forgot a few boxes, say in the garage, um, the, the, those would actually be uh, stale teas, not aged teas. So when you have uh, aged teas, um, we look at where it is stored. The environment has to be cool, similar to wines. Uh, you can collect a few cases of say Cabernet Sauvignon, but you don't want to keep it in the, a hot and humid area. Uh, you can't kind of forget a few bottles in the shed out in the garden. You know, it's uh, hot, it's, uh, it won't keep the wine very well. So with aged teas, it's the same. So we have uh, three aged teas here today. Uh, the first one is the Old Grove Strasian. This is a 2013 that we acquired a couple of years ago. This is a charcoal roasted oolong twisted varietal from Uyi mountain range. So Uyi oolongs are uh, usually harvested in the springtime and they get re-roasted uh, for a period of a few months before it gets released in the autumn time. So by October um, and November, the new teas are released, but oftentimes there may be an abundance in the harvest uh, for one particular year. So the farms will then keep the tea and re-roast it uh, to keep moisture out. But re-roasting it and um, storing it in a controlled environment that's quite cool with good air circulation will enhance the flavor of the tea. So uh, in the case of wine, when you have a new wine, it's very fruity, a little bit sweet, easy to drink, but it's not thick in flavor. Those flavors will not develop unless you keep the wines in a cellar. So if it's kept in a cool cellar, then years later, you would get a very rich, oaky, more earthy finish. For aged teas, it's the same. The tea can be re-roasted or it can be kept in its original form. Uh, if it's not re-roasted, in the case of our Tiguanyi 1986, uh, my dad brought this in years ago. Uh, he had probably forgotten the pallet that he had placed on the top racks of our warehouse. So when we um, were able to move the whole pallet down with a forklift, this, um, this tea to me is like finding a jar of cookies. Um, and if, if you taste a tea that has been aged well and aged naturally, then you get more of that nice marzipan finish. It tastes a lot like almond extract. It has a hint of that brightness, but at the same time, it has the dry fruit notes. Uh, oftentimes we uh, munch on dry plums for Chinese sweets. Um, umes in the sushi roll is a plum that is preserved with salt. So this has a hint of that umeboshi taste. Our um, oldest tea for, for oolong in our collection uh, that we've released is the aged 1980 Dongding. 
This particular batch uh, was acquired from a farm uh, in Taiwan. So in, um, in Nantou, many of the tea farms had uh, crafted the tea by hand, traditionally without machines. That's why the H Dongdi 1980 is not rolled quite as tight. There's loose leaf roll. And to remove the moisture in the aging process, the tea needs to be re-roasted each year. So that was Longyan fruit wood roasted. So it has a nice smokiness to it. But since it's aged from 1980 and re-roasting for, for many years now, the tea actually has a lot more of its, um, the smokiness, it's mellow, it's easy to drink. That's why most of the aged teas are ideal for brewing in a yixing pot, like a puar, and it can withstand heat quite a bit. Aged teas don't have much caffeine because most of that freshness have dissipated. So I uh, brew some of this 1986 Chie Guan in my yixing pot. I dedicate uh, this particular pot to the aged oolongs that are not uh, roast it. If you are going to um, brew aged teas that are charcoal roasted, you may want to dedicate a separate yixing as the yixings would pick up the smokiness of the tea. So it's easy to brew. I can put hot water in. It can stay very hot and then I will decant straight into my cup to enjoy in the evening. Uh, you can have a tea like this after a heavy meal. You don't necessarily need to drink poor or black tea. And it still pairs really well with um, uh, richer sweets. So here I have uh, the Sunny Hills um, pineapple shortbread. So this, these shortcakes are great because it's a little bit richer in flavor. Uh, and it pairs perfectly with any of these aged oolongs as well. If you want to read a little more about our aged teas and what we release each year, uh, then please visit our website, redblossomtea.com. And of course, follow us on our YouTube channel.